I spent 100 days on Hardcore Ragnarok, and here's what happened. This 100 days playthrough proved to be my most challenging one yet, because if I die, I reset back to level 1, and all of my progress is wiped. But to make things a bit more interesting for myself and you as the viewer, I've set aside some goals for this 100 days playthrough. I must hatch one of every single wyvern type that's available on the Ragnarok map, and two, I must include herbivores in my boss army. The twist? No theories, no tickle chickens in this run, but mixing carnivores and herbivores is allowed. And furthermore, I have some boosted settings just to make this playthrough a bit more comfortable for myself and more enjoyable for you all. Can I complete this 100 days challenge or will the harsh conditions of Ragnarok claim me? So come along viewer, let's survive together. Also don't forget to subscribe because these videos take a long time to make. Day 1, I created my character and spawned into the mystical realm of Ragnarok for the second time. It's the second time because I failed my first hardcore attempt. And this is my official restart. I'll show you all how I perished in my first playthrough at the end of the video if you're interested. Other than that, I've never played on Ragnarok before so everything was fresh and new for me. But since this was my second go around on this beach, I was aware of some crates that offer up Day 1 metal tools and I broke them open hoping for a pick and a hatchet. I did manage to get the sword though, which is just as good. I noticed two moss chops in the area and ran up to them to see what they wanted to eat. One was asking for a rare flower. When I was running down the beach, I saw flowers sticking up out of the sand. So I went back to collect some, and then ran back to the moss chops. Unfortunately for me, when I got back he was asking for prime meat, so this would just have to wait for a little while. Since these two high level moss chops were hanging around here, and I wanted one eventually, I made a foundation, clothing, and storage chests to hold all of my goods. I was human, and my body would need nourishment eventually. So I ran along the local beach, showing all the dodos and dilos my zentetsuken, and harvested their hide and meat. Since I had a sword equipped, I thought I was pretty unstoppable, but this dilo quickly put me in my place, and I almost died on day one. Not a good look. I made my way back to camp and while waiting for my dinner to cook, I harvested trees through the night to build a trap so I could tame one of the trikes that were hanging out on the beach. In the start of day 2 I found two high level trikes and placed down the trap, loaded up my slingshots, and got one's attention. The trike was a monster and he charged right through the trap and broke it immediately and I almost bit it here on day 2. I spent most of the morning kiting the trike around my trap and shot rocks when I could. But the trike was too powerful, so I ran away. When I was safe to do so, I set up another trap for this yellow trike that was wandering around. I wanted to tame it mostly because it was yellow. I got the trike's attention, and it broke the trap just like the other trike. I played kite the trike for a few minutes, and then decided to run out of render to reevaluate my situation. Once the trike calmed down, I rebuilt the trap, and got him in, no sweat this time, and began the long process of knocking him out with slingshots. This took a really long time. An obscene amount of time. After dishing out some quality disrespect, he went down and I started harvesting mejo berries to tame him up. After that I placed a campfire to cook some meat and waited for him to tame. After waiting for what felt like forever, he finally tamed and I named him Cheese. My dogs and my favorite snack. Cheese was kind of a dull trike, he didn't have much of a personality, but that's okay. He would be my stalwart defender, and he would be a crucial part of the first 10 days of this playthrough. I was going to use him to make a ton of narcotics. After I put a saddle on him, we started farming turtles that were on the beach for the keratin because I needed to tame a pteranodon eventually so I could become skybound. After harvesting a lot of keratin and meat, I crafted up some mortar and pestles to craft narcotics and made a forge to bake some metal. While the metal got cozy in the forge, I crafted a ton of narcotics as well. The Maz Chops from earlier was asking me for a rare flower again, and luckily for me I had one on my person and I obliged. It wasn't quite satisfied yet so I just followed it around waiting for its next request, like a waiter. Unfortunately for me on day 4, the Maz Chops asked for a rare mushroom and I didn't have any, so it was goodbye for now I guess. A little while later, I found a PT that I liked and trapped it with a bulla and, you know the drill, I knocked it out, went to go get some prime meat from this bronto that was wandering on the beach. Jeez, my boy, made light work of this giant snake with legs. 
I gave the pteranodon some of my prime meat, and soon enough it tamed. I was too excited to finally fly, so I didn't name it yet. I just wanted to get into the air and explore what Ragnarok had to offer. After exploring for a bit, I found some crystal and harvested some so I could make myself a spyglass. And, as luck would have it, I got a rare mushroom as well. So I went back and tamed that moss chops. I tamed her up, and named her Fungus. Now, since I had a spyglass and my PT, I started to look around for a decent level to Argentavis because at some point I wanted to move to a new base location, and I needed some muscle to help me carry all of my supplies. I found this 140 just asking to be tamed, so I led it to the beach and began crafting a trap to hold it still. I got the trap placed and noticed it wasn't too far away, so I shot it with an arrow, and flawlessly led it into the trap and knocked it out. While waiting for our feathered friend to get hungry, I noticed this 130 PT, and I decided to knock her out as well. I didn't trust the safety of the beach, so I was hovering in the air, keeping a watchful eye on the RG when I heard stomping and a roar. The Megalosaurus had wandered out of the jungle and made eyes on the RG, like a chicken dinner. So I acted fast and led it away, being very mindful not to get pulled off in the process, because if this thing pulled me off my PT, it would be game over. In the morning, I waited for that Megalo to fall asleep. I wanted to tame it since it was such a high level, so I got to work crafting a stone trap. While I was gathering resources, the PT and the RG tamed, and I named the RG Rizzler. But I was too focused on getting this trap built, so they'd have to wait. I shot at her to get her attention, and lit her close to the trap, then lost aggro almost immediately. I tried again, this time with my PT. And we got her in the trap and I started knocking her out. After a little while, she went to sleep, and while waiting for her to get hungry, I gathered up my new squad and headed back to camp. After getting the new tame settled, I flew back to the Megalo and gave her some meat. As night fell, the Megalo woke up and I lost all of my progress. I was a bit upset because I sank a lot of resources into taming her. So I began knocking her out again. I flew around looking for Argies to get their prime meat and fed the Megalo and waited very patiently for her to tame. And, because I was curious, I decided to listen to the Megalosaurus dossier as well. She finally tamed and I named her Killer Queen Bites the Dust. I potted her up and flew back to camp. While she got some sleep, I decided to rename her because her name actually looked kinda sus on the name tag. So I just settled on Killer Queen. When night fell and she was fully awake, we went on a rampage so we could get some levels and keratin or chitin to make an RG saddle so we could finally move to a better base location. The rampage continued into day 7 and I fought this Kentarosaurus for keratin. I took a moment to level Killer Queen and I started to get swarmed by buzzards. This was dangerous because they attack you, the player, directly and ignore your dino. I had to run and keep moving. We were attacked by this raptor pack, and then the buzzards caught up. I thought I was done for. I was ready to give up, but at the last minute, we pulled through and we ran. Killer Queen was out of stamina for a moment. I uncryoed Rush, my PT that I had just tamed, and potted up Killer Queen, and we flew back to the safety of the camp post haste. After we rested for a moment, I crafted Rizzler his saddle, then packed up all of our stuff, potted up the team, and we took off, hoping for greener pastures. I found this place that looked a lot like Yosemite National Park. I fell in love with the location immediately, and here is where we shall settle. I got to work getting established and placed all of our crafting structures down. Then I flew around looking at the surroundings so I could get my bearings a little better. When I got back to the base, I noticed this Doty was wandering around, and I decided to add her to my team. She was quite stubborn and ran out of the safe zone and into the path of some spinos. So with the help of Killer Queen, we did a safety sweep of the area before knocking the Doty out. After she went to sleep, I fed her some Mejo berries and I waited for her to tame. The next day, I harvested some metal with my pick and waited for the sun to rise and took a moment to admire how nice art could look sometimes. While running, I got a little too close to the edge and almost lost this hardcore playthrough at this moment. After that, I took Rizzler and started farming the Spinos in the area for easy experience in meat as well as their sales for the boss tributes. 
and to keep my newfound family from starving, I placed down some feeding droughts. These things would serve two purposes. One, they'd keep my dinos fed. Two, they stopped wild dinos from spawning in the area. After I got them placed, the next plan on the agenda was to get myself some silica pearls and cementing paste. So I flew all over the map looking for some large beaver dams. I eventually found some, and I'm not brave enough to rob beavers while they're still around, so I stuck my hand into the cookie jar. And when they got angry and followed me, I led them over the side of this waterfall. <laughs> and there were a lot of beavers. I get an insane amount. Look at all these beavers. Insert Canadian joke here. Once the coast was clear, I helped myself to all of their tasty cementing paste and flew back home to check on the doty. I noticed when I got back that I could also make myself a fresh set of flak armor and decided to get out of these old rags. I was feeling like a new man now, like a million bucks. As the sun was going down, I went to check up on our roly-poly friend and saw fungus just chilling in the water. I have no idea how she got down there. Before long, our new doty was up and I named her Rolo and then potted her and fungus up right as the spino got too close. I wasted no time in putting Rolla to work and used her to help clean up the base a bit. She was a mean, lean stone farming machine. I used the stone that we gathered to craft some dino gates to keep the bad dinos out and my team safe. Then I went out to farm some tech dinos for electronics and oil to get my production started. I found this tech stego and began the work. I used that oil to craft meat spoilers and these do exactly what you think they do. I'd use them to spoil meat faster for narcotics. Then, I placed down some fresh mortar and pestles, made some spark powder, and began spoiling a lot of meat. On day 10, I crafted a lot of trank arrows because I wanted to tame an anki for metal and flint farming. So I decided to play it a little risky today, and headed into the mountains to find one. I really didn't care much about the level since it was just a farming dino, and I found this one that I liked, and began knocking it out. After the Yankee tamed, I started harvesting these tuxedo chickens for their tasty organic polymer and quickly flew home before it got too dark. I wasn't equipped to deal with the snow biome at night just yet. After we got back home, I named the Anki Skibbity and I took it metal farming for the rest of the day. The morning of day 11, I crafted a lot of refining forges to smelt all of the metal we had harvested the night before, then crafted and placed a fabricator so I could finally leave the Stone Age behind and join the industrial world. I also needed more firepower, so I crafted myself a long neck rifle, and then a chainsaw. At this time, I wanted to tame a griffin so I could steal some wyvern eggs at some point, hopefully, and to travel around the map a lot faster as well. So I scanned the mountain peaks looking for a suitable candidate. Unfortunately, I didn't find any, so I went back home for the rest of the day, and I waited for the sun to come back up. The next day, while flying through this ravine, I spotted two griffins. One caught my eye over the other but its level was far too low. The other one was a level 145 and I needed to tame it. I swear all of the holiday dinos with the fun colors are always a low level. I needed to set up a gate trap so I scanned for a good place to set one down. This area however was really dangerous and I eventually found a safe-ish spot to set down the trap. I got to work farming up the resources to craft one. As I was placing the gates down, a raptor rolled up to me while I was crafting, so I ran super slow. I managed to get on a rush at the last moment and fought off the assailant. After that slight kerfuffle, the trap was complete and I took off to get that griffin. With surgical precision, we got into the trap and I started the long process of knocking it out. Eventually one of my crossbows broke, I was running out of trank arrows and the griffin was looking quite bloody, I was about ready to give up hope. Until this last shot. While waiting for the griffin to tame, I noticed that there were micro raptors in the area as well as regular raptors, so I went home to get a bit more muscle. I settled on Killer Queen since she was my most powerful tame at the time and we headed back to the spot where our griffin lay slumbering. Megalosaurs become terrible when they go without sleep and Killer Queen wasn't firing on all pistons. I tried to use her to kill this micro raptor and it backfired. I chased down the Microraptor and I didn't see the pack of normal raptors waiting in the shadows. Working as a well-oiled machine, the Microraptor knocked me off of Killer Queen and the other raptors began going ham. I was helpless and just watched as I was getting chewed to death. After I came to, I ran right for Rush and flew away. I was just done. I didn't want to do this anymore. I managed to lead the raptor pack away from me and landed to check up on our griffin when out of nowhere 
I had some rare flowers on me from the beaver dams, and I decided that I'd just go ahead and tame this Microraptor. Not many people know this, but a Microraptor shoulder pet will keep you from getting stunned by them. And since this was a hardcore playthrough, it would prove to be invaluable. I knocked out this 150, and I had special plans for her. Oh yes, very special plans. Before long, the griffin tamed, and look at these stats! This was the best griffin I have ever tamed in my entire time of playing Ark. Since we had the experience buff from taming him, I took him out to swoop and get some levels before heading home. On day 14, it was time to go to the wyvern trench and get a decent wyvern egg. Hopefully. I wasn't recording when I named the griffin, but his name is Starscream for those of you who are wondering. Starscream and I headed to the wyvern scar. But before we got there, I took a moment to check out this yellow loot drop. And it had a canteen with a great chainsaw blueprint. Then we found this red drop with a nice flak helmet as well. We made it to the wyvern trench, and after luring out the wyverns, we took a look at the eggs on offer, and a lot of them were... Yeah, not so good. I was about to leave until I found this 160 poison egg. Look at this baby. I have just born to win. I grabbed it and skedaddled back home. When I got back home, I crafted an incubation station and threw my egg down and waited patiently for it to hatch. After she hatched, I named her Ivy because she looks like a small plant. And after imprinting her, I flew to the ice cave to farm a little bit of oil to get me by for my next project. I also tried to tame this tech parasaur with the help of Killer Queen, but uh, yeah, Killer Queen accidentally ate it. Whoops. I wanted to finish my collection of farming dinos. I had one for stone, metal, flint, meat, berries. Now I needed one for wood. I thought about taming a beaver, but threw that idea out the window because mammoths exist. So I spent a good majority of day 16 gathering the stuff needed to go out and successfully tame one. After flying around for a bit, I found this decent leveled one with colors that I really liked, and I started to safari tame her. After she went down, I hovered in the air waiting for her to tame up, and then my heart sank, as a U Tyrannus and its Carno pals showed up and ruined my taming effectiveness. <sighs> well, I didn't want to give up on this mammoth yet, so we fought for her. After taking care of business, I flew back home to grab a ton of major berries for her. I spent most of the day waiting for this mammoth to tame, and she eventually did. I named her Ohio, and then I potted her up and took her to her new home. By the time we got her back, Ivy was fully grown. I took her out to start fighting Spinos because they give amazing experience. After Ivy and I had our fun, I took Ohio out and gathered a healthy amount of wood. For day 18, I decided to start building my new home. And after that, I needed a break from building for a bit, so I took Ivy to farm some burnt trees for charcoal. And if any of you didn't know it, you could take your wyvern up to some trees and press C and they'll do their wing attack and it'll harvest charcoal and thatch and wood for you. Pretty cool. I continued to build on day 19, and for the next part of my ambitious project, I would need a lot of crystal. But before I could go harvest some comfortably, I needed to farm for fur so I could craft myself a set of fur armor to keep from freezing to death. I took Ivy and Skibbity into one of the ice caves to quickly harvest some fur, polymer, and crystal. We flew back home, and I got my fur armor crafted finally, and I gotta say, I look quite like a rugged mountain man at this point. Skibbity, Ivy, and myself went back to the cave, and we farmed a lot of crystal and oil. When we got back home, I noticed that I could craft myself an industrial grill, and I got it placed. Right in time for dinner as well because my tummy was a rumbling. I'm hungry. With all that crystal we farmed earlier in the day, I crafted a lot of S plus windows for my house. And with all of my glass crafted, I began to finalize the construction of my base. While building, I fell through a crack in the oh floor. My God. I thought I was dead because in this area, it had a lot of spinos, baryonyx, and piranha, and other horrors beyond my comprehension. But I got lucky and only had to deal with a couple of piranha as I swam back to shore. Learning from my recent tumble, I got a floor placed, and I couldn't cover the crack with a foundation, so I set down a pane of glass, just to add on to the fear of heights. It added a certain horror aesthetic. Then I continued to build for the rest of the day. On day 21, I packed up most of my crafting stuff and placed it inside of my new home. And are you guys ready for the final product? 
Here we have a luxurious A-frame mountain home, centered in the middle of Ragnarok with a 3 minute griffin flight to all of the surrounding biomes. It includes modern luxuries such as fireplace, a spacious interior, workstations, and a gorgeous view of a waterfall. If I ever make it big on YouTube, I want to own one of these in real life. After completing the house build, I made some stone pillars to act as lamp posts at night so I could see if there were any dinos sneaking up to my gates. And the final cherry on top was the industrial forge. After all of that and three days of solid building, I moved all of my crafting stations inside and took a moment to enjoy the fruits of my labors and rested in my new home. After taking a few days to build my house, I needed to progress a lot more. I had some caving coming up and I had a thyla in mind, because they're the old reliable and the tried and true. So I left with Starscream to head into the highlands to find some ovis. Thylas eat cooked mutton instead of regular meat. We found this ovis and I harvested it up and then flew home to cook this meal fit for a new tame. While waiting for the mutton to cook up, I crafted a lot of gunpowder as well to make some simple bullets and then some trank darts. After that the mutton was ready and I was locked and loaded. Starscream and I flew into the desert to find a good Thyla. Spoiler alert, we didn't find any. I uh, <laughs> I forgot to record day 23. What? No, no, alright. I know that sounds bad. I'm so sorry, I promise you I didn't die in cheeseless challenge. I'll show you proof that I didn't die on day 25. Okay, moving on, day 24. I tamed an okay Thyla on day 23, but for you guys and the sake of content, I won't leave until I find a new Thyla. Starscream and I swooped along the coast looking for one and I happened to cross this level 140. So I got to work knocking it out safari style. As night fell, I ran into the super sketch ravine full of carnos, scorpions, and rock golems. And honestly, I wasn't about that life. In the wee hours of day 25, it finally went to sleep and I cleared the area of all the things just waiting to ruin my taming effectiveness. Also, here's proof that I didn't die. You can check my tribe logs if you want. Go ahead and pause the video and have a look see. If not, let's continue. I also found this low level female Thyla. I liked her colors, so I tamed her up as well. I like to live life on the edge, so I decided to play some taming chicken with this Thyla. And it almost woke up right before I tamed it, but we clutched it out. After he was mine, I named him Phantom Tax. I took all three of my Thylas and let them do... Well, you already know. I named the female Thyla Fireball after the drink. Even thinking about it now kind of makes my stomach hurt. Phantom Tax and Fireball had a baby, and you can probably already guess what I named the baby. If you've been following along with my naming patterns, you'd be correct. Congratulations, you win! Nothing. I have nothing to offer. Look, alright everyone, the views have been down this month, alright? I can't afford anything again. While waiting for Sigma to grow up, I flew around looking for the treasure chest on the mountain, and I was watching a bunch of guides on good loot in Ragnarok, so they said it would be up here, and I didn't find anything. I checked a few times actually, and still no treasure chest. I'm not sure if this is an outdated version of Ragnarok or what's going on. Anyway, I decided to give up after a while. On day 27, I crafted myself a pump shotgun and a flashlight mod as well as some shells. And Sigma finally grew up so I took him out to shred some spinos for power leveling. After running through all the dinos like a D1 linebacker, Sigma ended up with about 14k HP and 400 plus melee. And yes, he did hit like a literal truck. Oh, he was perfect. I spent most of the day of day 28 farming loot crates in the ice cave, and if you leave the loading area and fly back in, all of the loot crates respawn. About 4-5 to five crates spawn in here, and they all have some decent loot. I would say this is a great haul after a few hours of work. I was sick and tired of running down to the river every time I needed a drink of water, so I thought I'd be proactive and get my plumbing situation figured out. I wasn't a high enough level yet to craft the industrial cooker just yet. So I'd have to settle on these cooking pots for now, and after that I decided to craft some shotguns from a blueprint that I got from the ice cave. After I got my shotguns crafted, I flew back to the ice cave, and I farm more loot throughout the day. Doing this is addicting because it feels a lot like gotcha, except you don't spend all your money, and you actually get stuff. Uh, anyway, I also tested out the shotgun on some of these cave bears, and holy moly mother of mundus. This thing could punch holes in the fabric of reality. At the time you shot this thing, it sounded like God slamming his car door. I saw a guide on YouTube where I could find artifacts, and some of the locations were deep underwater. And I was in desperate need of silica pearls so I could make some scuba gear. So before going out and looking for the artifacts, 
I stole from beaver dams once again, much to the displeasure of the beavers. I got my scuba gear crafted and headed out for the day. I checked the first artifact location, which was right next to my house. I dove into the cold water, and it wasn't there. Then I flew to these underwater ruins out in the jungle, and I dove into the water there. And then I swam through these dilapidated ruins, and the artifact wasn't there. I flew over to the monkey ruins, and the artifact was there, blessed monkey. So I took it and left. I flew to the wyvern trench to look for another artifact, and I almost died in the process. And the artifact... You're right, wasn't there. The search went into day 31, and I checked up on some of the other artifact locations too. And I didn't find them there either. Quite frustrated and quite puzzled, I flew back to the watchtower in the highlands. I took a moment to think about my next move. The redwoods nearby did have an artifact. It was the artifact of the brute, so I grabbed it. When I got home, I noticed that I could craft myself an industrial cooker, finally, and I did just that. I also made some preserving bins, because at some point I wanted to craft some kibble and tame a bacillosaurus, and I would need the preserving bins to make jerky for the kibble. And while just hanging out at the house all day, I changed the colors of Starscream to match his namesake's color palette. Today, I decided to run the first half of the Ragnarok maze. I didn't know what I was getting myself into when I went in. I steeled myself, and then I set foot in this forbidden place. All right, uh, B R A T Epic Parkour, and finally A Rata. Out in the dark, scary pit. When I set foot through this door, I was hit with flamethrowers on all sides, and my fight or flight took over, and I panicked. I thought this run was over at this point, but luckily I managed to tank the damage. <laughs> When I was mentally prepared, I crawled on my belly along the floor to hit a secret button. My palms were really sweaty at that moment. Mom's spaghetti. Alright, down the dark, scary water. Go, go, gadget, scuba tank. Over the spike. Whoa, oh, oh. Get the door. Go, 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 go. Alright, Sigma. Let's go! Alright, press this and run. Oh, he can't fit through the door. Oh no. Alright, let's go, Sigma. Oh, having a pile makes this part easy. Okay, let's go. Oh, an Ascendant Silas battle. What? I'll just be checking this. This one's for all the Ark homies that lost a hardcore playthrough to these stupid micro raptors. Alright, through the scary bat cave. I didn't even bother hanging around for the bats, I pressed the button on the door and ran through. I ran into the room with Sigma and began fighting the bosses. Sigma was a super thyla, and he had an ascended saddle now thanks to that red drop. The bosses and the bats didn't stand a chance against our combined might. After five waves of spirit bears and wolves attacking us, they calmed down and I grabbed two more artifacts. And then, the maze was done, and I breathed a sigh of relief. I could have ran the second half of the maze, but I decided against it. My stress levels were already high enough as it is for the next few days, and I was feeling pretty great about our progress. And now I felt like it was time to finally set up my boss army. So I flew home and started harvesting a lot of narco berries for narcotics. Since Christmas was only a few short weeks away, I was in the holiday spirit and wanted to get festive. I spawned in some of the Ark Christmas decorations and placed them down next to the windows, so the Spinos had something cheery to look at while they tore the local population asunder. For some reason, these trees would just crumble and then turn into a table after a few seconds. I'm not sure why they did this, or for what purpose. I also needed to turn my attention to teaming boss dinos, so I made a lot of trank darts for easier teaming. The next day, all of the darts I would need were crafted up and ready to go. But before I left for the day, I did some metal farming so the metal would cook while I was away. And when that was done, I grabbed my long neck rifle and headed out to see what I could find. While swooping around with Starscream, I noticed the Syntac Rex walking in the valley. And he was a high level to boot! So I started knocking him out safari style. After he went down, I checked on his health stat and it was looking a little low. I also noticed this red drop and it had some amazing loot. This area was very rich in rexes, but they were too low to tame. So I started killing them in hopes to get a higher level. 
and my work was eventually rewarded. I found this 145 female Rex and got to work knocking her out. After about 20 or so minutes of waiting, I decided to put the Rexes down. This may seem cruel to some, but I needed to do it to spawn in higher leveled Rexes, so I sent them both packing to Jesus. I had a ton of narcotics in my pocket and some metal gates, so I flew into the grasslands to see if I could find a Giga for the Ice Queen fight. None were spawning and I needed a break so I just relaxed at the watchtower. The next day, I flew back to the area where we found the two Rexes. This time I saw blinking lights and there was a 180 Tech Rex! I was elated over this find and I got to work tranking him out. I know Tech Dinos are mega rare spawns, but I couldn't pass up this opportunity. I would say this is like finding a unicorn, but those exist in this game and they're actually not that hard to find. After putting him to sleep, I cleared the area of any threats and got a good look at his stats. Over 7k HP? Now that's a Rex with some chest hair. So while waiting for him to starve tame, I flew back to base to get Ivy to farm some charcoal up in the volcanic area. The burnt trees offered a lot of charcoal and wyverns were great at farming it. We started harvesting away when I saw a distinctive shape in my peripheral vision. There it was, a 168 female tech rex to go with the male I was just taming. After she went down, I had some time to kill so I went out searching for a tech stego to help with my berry farming. And just like that, I began knocking him out, but I lost him eventually, and he ended up in the water. Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Hello. When the sun came up on day 39, I searched all over the highlands for an ovis. I searched high in lovis but I couldn't find any Ovis. For some reason, my old man eyes thought these rocks were Ovis, but they were not Ovis, they were rocks. I regrettably settled on taming these two brick house Rexes with some prime meat. It's not ideal, but it's all I had. When the male Tech Rex tamed, I named him Titan, and he was a monster with some insane melee stats. This was my redemption arc from those low level Rexes the days prior. When the female tamed up, I named her this. Yeah, I named her Gat. I will not apologize. Then I flew back to base and made these two get acquainted a little better. While waiting for the egg to incubate, I decided to run the ice cave a few times to see if I could get any notable loot. When I was finished, the baby was ready to hatch and I named him D4C to start. But I wasn't truly settled on that name and I'd end up changing it a bit later. While the baby grew up, I made the preparations to run the jungle cave. This cave was going to be quite stressful because I've never done this before, and I plan on doing the lava golem boss as well. So I over prepped just to be safe. I wore the best armor I could craft, and it was a mishmash of different armor sets. I was really tanky with over 1000 armor. Hey man, the name of the game is survival. I don't care if I look good doing it. I left my base to find the hidden jungle cave. I searched for most of the day and I swear up and down that I couldn't find it to save my life. And at the time of recording the footage, my internet was down so I had to search for this place manually. And that wasn't fun at all. But at least I got to explore the local region though. I appreciated all the hard work that was put into this map. I looked at all the small details. And hey, you know, that's pretty good for me. The morning of day 42 I found the cave entrance and I ran inside. The majority of the cave wasn't too horrible, probably because most of the dinos didn't spawn, so it made navigating a snap. For the dinos that did spawn in, I lured them with my shotgun into Sigma, and he handled the heavy lifting. My ascendant double barrel was pretty good at getting things out of my way too. I grappled over to the artifact and clenched my cheeks. I made it over safely, and then I grabbed the artifact, and then grappled my way over to the lava golem cave. I managed to get on the safety ledge just in time, then the long battle began. This fight wasn't too difficult. Every time he would pick up a rock, I'd just step back and it would just kind of bounce off the wall. I'm not a very rhythmic person, you could probably tell by my voice editing. But my timing was off sometimes though, and I'd accidentally shoot a rocket on the floor and almost blow myself up. This happened a couple of times, but my armor was really good, so I tanked it a little bit. I was down to my last two rocket launchers, and finally, the battle was over. I stressfully grappled over to the lava golem's body, grabbed my loot, and then got the heck out of there. Alright, final stretch. Oh god, oh god, oh god, just juke, juke, juke. Oh, I'm cracked! I'm a literal god at this game! Now that the jungle cave was down and dusted, I could focus on raising my baby Tech Rex. I renamed him from D4C to Ultra Goliath. It just sounded cooler in my head. While I was back at base, I took a moment to craft some of the blueprints I got from the lava golem. And them blueprints were really good. Some of them. The rest were, uh, kind of crap. 
I also repaired my armor. Ultra Goliath was now fully grown, and we had to get some levels in him. So naturally, we did some spino busting along the river. After a long day of farming spinos for easy experience and their sales, I checked up on my rexes to see if there were any viable offspring for my rex army. Some didn't make the cut, but two did, and that was a good start. The second half of the Ragnarok maze was coming up again, and I didn't feel quite comfortable running in there all willy-nilly this time. I decided to take some time out of the day and built a whole greenhouse to grow crops just to run this maze. Oh yeah, and make kibble too, I guess. That's, in the, that's, that's a fringe thing I was doing. So the majority of day 45 was getting a super scuffed greenhouse set down. I didn't really care what it looked like, I just needed to get it done, and for it to function. After the greenhouse was built, I went out with Ohio and started farming the area for seeds, and threw around this stupid chicken. I got the crops planted, and all I had to do now was play the waiting game. On day 46, I was ready to run the ice cave and defeat the frozen menace, the Ice Queen. I jumped down into the icy caverns on foot and rode Sigma. There were a lot of deathworms in the tunnels, like a lot, an obscene amount. There, why are there so many? Okay, so this might be a bit much for a Thyla. Sigma wasn't cutting it, and I decided to use Ultra Goliath to clear the path. It was a tight fit for UG, and he got stuck easily. However, his bite force was unparalleled, and he made very short work of these pests. I eventually made it into the Ice Queen's lair and jumped down the waterfall. Uncryled Ultra Goliath and began chomping away, and she did a lot of damage. But she was no match for our combined might. Well, I don't see what all the hype was, honestly. It was kind of easy. And uh, the loot kind of wasn't worth it. Oh well. It was a means to an end. I ran into the artifact cave and got scared of this Giga making noises, so I brought out Ultra G. I didn't realize it was just a part of the decoration, but it was harmless. And I didn't really feel like hanging out at all, so I grabbed the artifact and left. Luckily for me, the Ice Queen's lair was right next to my base. As I left the waterfall, a pack of raptors quickly found out, and I left for home. My collection of artifacts was shaping up quite nicely. While I was perpetually winning, I decided to run the other side of the Ragnarok Labyrinth, but before I could go do that, I needed to tame another sacrifice, so I found a random vulture. And you already know how it goes. Spill out grotta, jump down the scary hole. Careful. The difference this time is that I scooted along the floor and headed to the right this time. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I got cooked alive. And I was on fire, and I panicked and ran through the door. And are you ready for a moment that almost cost me this entire playthrough? I took a moment to process what just had happened, and I thanked my lucky stars that I was alive. I also slammed down a lot of med brews. I pulled up my character screen and saw that I was looking a bit crispy. Aside from that little incident, the maze was a snap though because I had my Thyla. And we just speed ran the next few parts, slam dunk the vulture. Now that I was done with the labyrinth and I got all of the artifacts that lay within, I didn't ever have to come back to this forbidden place. I wanted to go into the ocean at some point, so I started crafting up some scuba gear again and made some kibble to tame a dolphin for speed. And then I'd eventually upgrade to a Basilosaurus so I could hunt down squid. And I still needed to get the deep ocean artifact as well. My vegetable production was still a little low, and I could only make a few kibble at a time, but it would have to do. After my prep work, I flew to the ocean and suited up, only to see an Alpha Megalodon right off the rip. So I decided to lure it to the shore and have Ultra Goliath fight it. It was, uh... It was quite clunky. The fight continued into day 50 and we eventually managed to clutch out a W, but we were cutting it really close. After scoping the bay for a little while, I settled on this level 85 dolphin. I tried taming it with fish and that was taking forever. So I decided to part with some kibble just to speed things up. I decided to name him Screek, and I didn't bring a saddle with me so I potted him up and we headed home to craft one real quick. Then it was back into the ocean to get him some levels to max out his speed stat. We farmed megalodons for EXP into the night and swam out into deeper waters looking for something a bit juicier to tame. The next day while we were swimming out in the deep ocean we stumbled upon this perfect female Tuso. Wow. I made a mental note of her location and we swam for shore with expedience. I uncryoed Starscream, picked up Ultra Goliath, and began making the preparations needed. I wanted this to go absolutely perfect, so I was meticulous. I crafted a fresh crossbow, 
scrounged up my remaining trank arrows, and swooped over to Viking Bay to find a potentially high-level turtle. Since they were easy to tame up and I had some ascended Carbonemus saddles, I settled on this 135 and got to work knocking him out. And since the 152 so was on the line, I just used more kibble to tame him up, I didn't really care. After he tamed, I named him Bait3000 subscribe to Glam, and you better do it. I'm not asking anymore. Then we flew back home to craft him a good saddle. And then after I got his saddle crafted, I helped him level his health by attacking these baby Rexes that didn't quite make the cut. This took a long time. I had a tremendous amount of black pearls from the Ice Queen cave and I was saving them for a rainy day. Well, this day had a lot of rain. I swam all over looking for that Tuso with Screek and I couldn't find her. I was about to give up hope. When, all of a sudden, there she was. There she blows! I threw out the turtle bait and I kept my distance and I let her chew on the turtle for a bit. When she was ready, I popped some pearls into her beak and she was mine. Wow, if only it was easy to do this with real women. Am I right, fellas? Am I right? Huh? Huh? I named her Kraken Guard. Like the body wash this time. Don't worry, I'd end up changing it later. I had an idea to team a male too, so I could have an imprinted squid baby and well, yeah, that went terribly. The turtle was nabbed and I couldn't get close enough because of the eels. They were swarming him, so I just left. I got back to the shore and said farewell to Screek, because I'm not about to tread water on a silly dolphin while I have Cthulhu with me, okay? Before heading home, I waited for this enticing red drop, but, you know, Ark's gonna Ark, I guess. I got home and crafted her a saddle and then headed into the ocean. I started the day off right and farmed the two so tentacles I needed for the boss. In between squid wrangling, I helped my Tuxo heal by using her alt ability, and this helps them heal by draining blood from megalodons and big stuff like that. While grabbing the artifact, Kraken Guard got into a bit of a scrap with some eels and another Tuxo. I was worried at first, but she came out on top. I took Ultra Goliath and started farming Sarkos and Titanoboam in the swamps for their tributes for the next few days. I also tamed this Diplocalus because I've never tamed one before, and I needed a break from mindlessly just munching on animals for a bit. After finishing up the skins and the venom that I needed, I flew home to check up on my Rexes. I also noticed that I was able to craft an industrial grinder, and that solved a lot of my resource gathering troubles. After completing that task, I farmed for some fiber with my sickle, and took down this Carno that got a little too close, and this PT that got stuck in my window because he was being annoying. Then it was back to breeding and baby raising. At the start of day 57, I gathered up all the trash that I didn't want for my storage and threw it in the grinder to get an insane amount of resources. All I gotta say is holy moly. I put down some vaults to keep my resources separate. I had an idea to build myself a huge storage room like those Minecraft guys do or something. And that idea would never come to pass. I got way too busy in the final days of this challenge. Then, by the end of the day, I managed to lock down my perfect breeder rexes and began raising them. And with their help, I would breed for mutations. I managed to find myself a nice Christmas mod, and I downloaded that and it allowed me to place dark Christmas decorations. So for the start of the day, I spent it decorating, and after expending all of my Christmas cheer, I went out to tame some woolly rhinos. I have never used them in any ARC playthrough before, so I wanted to see what they were all about. After searching around the murder snow for a bit, I found a decent 145 female and got to work taking out all the threats in the area. And after knocking her out, she went down and I waited a long time for her to tame. I went searching around for another high level rhino. I flew around for a bit, and I found this 140 male, and you already know the drill. Shoot them with tranks, knock them out, and once I got them down, I finally had a breeding pair. For most of my 100 days videos, I have this tradition to go out and collect every single type of wyvern, so today I went back out into the wyvern scar looking for a decent egg. While swooping around, I got a bit careless and got hit by this poison wyvern spit, and it almost took me out. So going further, I would need to be a lot more careful. I had managed to fight off the wyverns, and I collected a few good eggs today, most notably this 150 fire wyvern egg. Having completed my goal for now, I flew back home. I decided that I'd just chill at the base today, and then I'd do some baby raising as well. And, on top of that, that 150 fire wyvern egg that I found hatched, and the baby was as white as snow. It was a Christmas miracle. I flew around gathering the remaining sauropod vertebrae that I'd need, and I also tried to go into the carnivorous caverns to farm megalania toxins in the dark. It was a very terrible idea. Nothing was spawning down here outside of a few megalosaurs. The megalania were nowhere to be found, and I stayed down here for a good amount of time. 
I decided to name the white wyvern Quasar, and I had also collected a lightning wyvern egg too, and I named him Le Shen. They both finally grew up, and I took Quasar out for a spin, and he did a darn good amount of damage. At this stage in the run, my house was being overrun by Rexes, so I decided to build walls for a pen. For day 63 and 64, I constructed the most brutalist pen I could imagine, and it worked out better than I had anticipated. I got my Rexes lined up for breeding, and then I set up my hatcheries to collect the eggs while I was gone. The plan today was to go out into the ocean and farm some Bacillosaurus. I know they can be rare on Ragnarok, and I spent a whole good amount of this playthrough in the ocean. I also decided to change the name of my Tuso. I named her Kilimari this time, instead of Krakenguard. For day 66, I spent the day farming Bacillos in Viking Bay. I had read online that they spawn in this area, and I just kept swimming around, and every Bacillo I saw I got the tentacle treatment. Wow, you know what? I'm just gonna roll with it. I don't care. So now it was time to go into the redwoods to farm Thyloclaws. And while I was flying through the murder snow, I had noticed an ice wyvern nest as well. And I wanted to steal an egg. But for some reason, the eggs weren't spawning in. It took a few times flying around the murder snow to finally get one to spawn in. But once it did, I finally got one. And then I went on a killing spree for all the Thylos for their claws. Day 68 was a day of hatching and a day of celebration. I had hatched the frost wyvern that I found yesterday, and I named her Permafrost. On the funny number day that everybody loves and I make a joke about in every video, okay, we're just day 69. I went back to the carnivorous caverns to try and find some megalania toxin, and I'm going to tell you that they did not spawn in again, so I wasted my time down here looking for some, and there were none. To be seen. Once again, YouTube to the rescue, and I found this beach where a ton of Megalania were spawning in, and it was a really bad day to be a Megalania. I farmed the rest of the toxins that I needed. Then, after that, it was time to go farm the rest of the RG Talons I needed. And I was finally done with farming for tributes for the Alpha Bosses. I need to create gas masks eventually for the boss fight, so I made a bunch of sap taps, and then I went out to the Redwoods to place them in trees. I would also need honey for some veggie cakes for my rhinos, and I flew around for a little bit looking for some beehives. I couldn't find any, it turns out they were all spawning in at this one spot, and I farmed a bunch of honey from this mutant beehive for the rest of the day. From repeatedly farming the ice cave, I managed to get myself a really nice Ascendant Woolly Rhino Saddle blueprint, and I reserved the rest of the day to make some. They would require a lot of cement and paste, so I went out and also farmed a ton of stone as well. I admit, I was pretty bad today. I just decided to AFK and watched my melee mutation baby grow up. There's not much else to talk about. I was in desperate need of a cheerleader. So today was the day I would go out and find myself a really good u Tyrannus for the boss fight. Ark being Ark, however, had other plans, and all the u Tyrannus that spawned in were just these trash low-level ones. So, ya boy did a dino wipe. And since I was a good boy, my patience paid off, and I was rewarded with this 145. I got to work tranking her out, and of course, you Tyrannus like to scream and your dinosaur gets really scared, so Star Scream was flapping and flipping all over the area. But through 1% luck, 10% skill, and 90% through five, whatever that song is, I managed to get her down. For day 75, I spent it back at the house again, and then I started to level my woolly rhinos to get the boss ready. And I got hit by a windstorm. I've never seen this before. I didn't even know what it did. It just made a bunch of spooky noises. I had a plan to eventually go out and tame a titanosaur, so I was looking around for a really good quetzal, and I found this really high-level tech quetz. It would serve my purposes nicely. I trapped it in a net and began knocking it out, and then I got ambushed by these raptors, and I wasn't having any of their nonsense. And then the rest of the day was just spent chilling waiting for this little guy to tame. The Quetz had tamed, and I named it Skywarp. Then of course I killed a ton of baby Rexes to get his levels up to snuff for this huge task at hand. And then, I made a lot of cannonballs, and a few cannons, and a platform to hold it all then started to slowly fly towards the highlands looking for a titanosaur. I managed to find a titanosaur, and taming it went so horribly wrong. I managed to shoot it in the head, and it pushed me off of my Quetzal saddle, and I hit the ground really hard. I didn't even think. I just started running. Come on! Come on! Move those legs! <laughs> <laughs> I went to turn around to whistle for my tech quets to settle down and stop attacking that titanosaur, but the titanosaur managed to turn him into a pancake. 
So there I was, in the Highlands, stranded without a ride home. But, since I'm so cracked at Ark Survival Evolved, I MacGyvered myself a way back home. There were pteranodons in the area, and I began knocking one out. For the chitin and keratin, I would farm the bugs near the volcano area. And to tame up the PT, I killed this Bronto for its prime meat. And now it was just playing the waiting game for it to tame. It was another day of just standing around the house watching my boss army grow up. That's all I did today. So we're just gonna move on to the next day, okay? On day 80, I got bored of just chilling at the house all day, so I decided to go out and explore a little bit. I wanted to check out the desert a bit more, because I was feeling slightly nostalgic about my last 100 days video, where I spent 100 days on scorched earth with only Desmodus. Basically in that 100 days, I tried to take out the alpha mana core using only Desmodus. I thought it would be a cool video idea, because Desmodus aren't natural on scorched earth. It had a bunch of unique challenges that were really interesting. If you fancy my content, you should totally check that video out. I'll leave a card up in the corner for you. I eventually made it to my destination, these desert ruins, and I just decided to hang out here for the rest of the night. Once I got back home from my little sabbatical, a few of my boss rexes were finally fully grown, and I decided to take them back into the desert to farm death worms for experience. Killing baby rexes is a lot faster for sure, but I had to wait for them to build up a little bit, and it would get me out of the house. I was going a bit stir crazy. I continued farming death worms into day 82. And then I went back home for a little bit and waited for the final bosses of my Rex army to be fully grown. And I wouldn't kill deathworms with these ones, I would just kill these baby Rexes instead. I'm probably saying the K word a bit too much for uh, YouTube. <laughs> what should I say then? I'm turning them into hamburger. Why not? And I leveled more Rexes. I needed a nurse, mostly to heal my boss Rex army. And I was looking for a Daedon. I flew into the mountains and I got distracted by the Sasquatch instead. I tamed it because... Why not? It's a giant monkey. And I affectionately named it Dr. Professor. It's just an inside joke between me and some friends, don't worry about it. Hey, since you're here, it could be an inside joke between us now. And I eventually got that Daodon. I don't spend too much time talking about him because I just used him to heal my army. He wasn't even part of the boss fight. He's literally just there. But he was an important asset nonetheless. Keeping up with his Daodon's ever-increasing hunger became an issue. So I'd have to stop sometimes, and I'd have to farm meat with my Rexes. It wasn't too much of a hassle, it just took away from the immersion of waiting around and healing my dinosaurs back up to full. And to make sure he ate all of his food like a good boy, I would occasionally fly out of render and then fly back in. When you do this, it causes the Daedon to eat all of its available food, and I'm not sure why it does this, but I'm not complaining, I don't want to hang around here forever. Now, it was time to level my Uteranus. I didn't worry too much about its HP this playthrough. I was more focused on getting its stamina up so I can continually spam Courage Roar. I got that fuzzy chicken leveled, and then it was time to go out and farm the last bit of charcoal I needed for gunpowder. Since the alpha boss fight was coming up very quickly, I also needed to go out and farm the materials needed for medbrews and veggie cakes for my rhinos. Day 88 through 90 was just me decorating the house with Christmas decorations. On day 91, I took the boss dinos to the green obelisk and began uncryoing them and setting them up. And out of curiosity, I decided to take one of my battle rhinos out for a spin. And this rex just happened to be around me at the time and he paid the ultimate price because OH MY GOD THAT DAMAGE! Oh my god. And I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. Day 92 through 99 was just me goofing off around Ragnarok for the last time. I made ammo. I spent the day fighting a titanosaur. I wanted revenge for Skywarp. And he was a tricky bugger. He tried to run away, but Ivy and I were on him like... Like something on something, okay? I've only had a week to edit this video and I'm very tired, I just wanted to end, okay? Eventually, he ran into the ocean, and he promptly drowned. How anticlimactic, but hey, it's just the way it is. And I tried to explore a bit of Ragnarok a bit more, but unfortunately my footage was corrupted for most of it. Which is very disappointing because I found this really cool Hall of Heroes place. But, alas, it do be like that sometimes. And on the eve of the boss fight, I took a moment to say goodbye to my teams for the last time. And we all shared a bite of cranberry. And as tradition, in all of my 100 days videos, I fired off 10 flares into the sky. And I watched them fall gracefully back down to earth with my tames. And I thanked them for all they had done for me. Because without them, 
this video wouldn't be possible. And I'm gonna miss him. And on day 100, I swooped for the final time around my house to give one last hurrah for my tames, and then I flew to the green obelisk to fight the boss. And here is my Rex army. Each of these Rexes are individually named from people who have shown me support throughout the year on my YouTube journey. I started my YouTube journey back in April, and each of you who have left comments on my videos are named after a Rex, and if you recognize your name, please leave a comment down below, and if I missed your name, I'm very sorry. My channel has blown up to epic proportions, and it's hard to keep up with everyone sometimes. But know this, I would not be able to do this full time without your guys' support, and I am very, very grateful for everything you have done for me throughout this year. It's been a dream of mine to do YouTube as a full time career, and, and I've been blessed. Now, without further ado, it's boss time. The dragon went down, and then it was time for the manticore. And the mana core went down. Kinda easily, actually. Huh. Well, that was kinda anticlimactic. I expected to die. I really wasn't expecting to come out of this alive. I had a whole grand finale plan. But here I am. <laughs> I survived. I survived 100 days in Ragnarok Hardcore! What do I do now? Uh, I guess I could hang the trophies up on my wall. Sure. And the flags. Huh. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Goodbye, everybody! Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! And there you have it, my friends. My final 100 days in the year 2023. It's been a wild year, and I'm glad to be where I am. You've all made this very possible, and I appreciate your support 100%. And 2024 will be my year. My goal is 20,000 subscribers. Can we reach that goal? It'll be up to you guys. From the bottom of my heart, from me to Molly, my dog, and my brother, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bless you all. Goodbye until the next video. Goodbye. And as promised, here's my first attempt failure. I was flying on the mountains on my Argentavis, and I got a bit too close to the murder snow. And I bought the big one. Well, that's it. Bye.